My guest hardly requires an introduction. Hillary Rodham Clinton is the first woman to be nominated for president by a major political party and in 2016 was the winner of the national popular vote. She served as first lady, U.S. senator, secretary of state. Today, wife, mother, and grandmother. Her latest book is Something Lost, Something Gained, Reflections on Life, Love, and Liberty. Welcome, Madam Secretary. Nice to see you again. It's great to be with you again, Michael. Thanks for having me. So I have one note, as they say in Hollywood or the literary world. I've got one note on the book. It does not involve a matter of substance. It has to do with the book title. Are you ready? Yes. I, too, love Joni Mitchell, and I love that song. Something lost, something gained makes perfect sense, but wouldn't it have been better if you'd gone with from both sides now? I've looked at life from both sides now. It's a serious question, and I want to know if you considered it. Well, I did, and as you know, because you uh, have nicely read the book, which I appreciate, uh, in the first chapter, I talk about what both sides now has meant to me and why that song has been like in the soundtrack of my life from my early 20s until today. And how when I saw uh, Joni Mitchell singing it at the Grammys last year, I was so touched. And the both sides now is indeed um, the song that sums up the kind of different stages of my life. I've looked at life. I've looked at love <laughs> from both sides now. And in my sort of reflections, something's been lost, something's been gained. It's uh, kind of the overview of uh, a long life. I keep watching on a loop. I think it's at Newport where she's singing it in 2022 and just brings the whole house down with emotion. It's hard for me to watch her sing it. I'm not quite sure why without feeling emotional about it. Well, first of all, the song itself is so meaningful for those of us who love it, like you and me, yep. but also after her um, cerebral aneurysm and her withdrawal from uh, doing anything uh, because of her health, the fact that she came back on the stage first at Newport, then memorably at the Grammys about a year or so later, and she was encouraged to do that by another singer, a young singer, Brandi Carlisle, who also loved her music and what those songs meant to her. And so she sought her out. She got to know her and I think encouraged her to get back on the stage, which really meant a lot to me. There are two chapters in the book that I think need to be read in tandem. One of them is, one is silver, the other is gold. And the other is, the kids are not all right. And what occurred to me as I read the book is every experience that you had in Park Ridge and thereafter is one not being duplicated by our kids today. I'm worried about them. You're worried about them. Who were the Park Ridge girls? I think that'll help explain. Well, I write in that chapter, one is silver, one is gold, which is from an old Brownie, a Girl Scout song that uh, my friends and I learned when we uh, joined uh, Brownies and became Girl Scouts. I have a group of friends that literally I've known since grade school, high school. Um, they've been with me along my journey. I've uh, been there for them through all of life's ups and downs. They've looked at life from both sides, too. And so I wanted to write about friendship. I wanted to write about friendship and family and why uh, it's important to really think about what our kids need to have the best uh, lives that they can possibly have. And as you rightly point out, Michael, in the book, I write about how I don't think our kids are all right because I think they've become addicted to social media. I think the phones in their pockets or their purses um, have a huge impact on how they spend their time, whether they interact with other people. And now we know that very often kids are affected by anxiety or depression or, you know, all kinds of uh, you know, problems that are at least connected to, if not caused by this addiction to the screen. So I was happy to see you cite the work of Robert Putnam. Bowling alone made an impact on me, the discussion of social capital of the sort that I'm sure the Rodhams enjoyed in Park Ridge, right? Participation, belonging, right. volunteerism that is so missing today. You cite Jonathan Haidt, you cite Gene Twangy. 
Here's what disappoints me, and it's not about you, Madam Secretary. I'm shocked that no person, no Republican, no Democrat is championing this issue. The social science is so clear. The political science is so clear. Our fabric has frayed as a nation. Our kids are disconnected. Too much time behind closed doors, on devices, and not enough time replicating the experience of their parents and grandparents. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it for your grandkids? Well, Michael, there are people who are championing it, but it's been a long and difficult road to get anything done. Actually, we can look at uh, the state of California, the state of uh, New York. I think some other states have also taken action, but we need national action. And sadly, our Congress has been dysfunctional when it comes to addressing uh, these threats to our children. So you're absolutely right. This should be at the top of every uh, legislative political agenda. There should be a lot of things done. Uh, we should be, uh, in my view, repealing something called Section 230, which gave um, you know, platforms on the internet uh, immunity because they were thought to be just pass-throughs, that they shouldn't be judged for the content that is posted. But we now know that that was an overly simple view, that if the platforms, whether it's Facebook or Twitter X or uh, Instagram or TikTok, whatever they are, if they don't moderate uh, and monitor the content, uh, we lose total control. And it's not just the social and psychological effects, it's real harm. It's, uh, you know, child porn and uh, threats of violence, things that are terribly uh, dangerous. So I couldn't agree with you more. We need to remove the immunity from liability and we need to have guardrails. We need regulation. Uh, we've conducted this big experiment on ourselves and particularly our kids. And I think the evidence is in uh, that we've got to do more. Take phones out of schools. I'm so happy to see uh, schools beginning to do that, where the kids turn their phone in when they walk in the door. And guess what, Michael? It won't surprise you because you're on this. Uh, kids are paying better attention in class. They are talking to each other in the lunchroom, uh, things that used to be part of your daily life when you were a child in school. So someone once said, final thought for, for Secretary Clinton, someone once said it takes a village. The way I like to express that is we need to mingle. And what you've said about Section 230 is correct from a policy standpoint, but somehow everybody's got to get back involved joining in their community. Final thought to you as the author of Something Lost, Something Gained. Well, Michael, this book is really um, about life and love and liberty. I talk about my own personal life and uh, some of the lessons that I've learned, the experiences that I've had, but I also obviously talk about the threats to our democracy, to our freedom, to our liberty. Uh, because I think if you're going to be an involved citizen, uh, you have to pay attention to what's going on. And we have to be focused on this election. We have to understand what's at stake. But to finally, finally add to what you said, We've got to get back to being a community again, uh, you know, having people interact with each other, find common ground together. So hopefully the election will turn out the right way. The fever uh, will be broken and we can go back to uh, trying to put our families and our communities uh, on the right track. Good luck with the book. Thank you for coming back. Thanks a lot, Michael. Good to talk to you. You too.